great deal learners in today's video we are going to see past paper questions from quarter x and series so don't expect that all the questions will be only from the quarter x it will be little bit a uh, mix of functions too okay let's get started uh, the first question is the function f is defined by uh, 7 minus 2x square minus 12x for all the real numbers express 7 minus 2x square minus 12x in the form of a minus 2 into x plus b whole square where a and b are constants so we are just going to uh, i mean express in the form of that but we no need to write what is the a and b values so what are we going to do first of all uh, they have given that x is having no other coefficient which means that two they have taken it out whenever we are going to convert that into a uh, complete square method we just have to take constant separately and only that x square and x term will be taking to convert into a proper square whether we need to take the two outside or not yes obviously we have to take because we need it in the form of 2 into x plus b it is not like 2x plus b if it is 2x plus b and we should try to convert the two also inside we should take and then we have to do the calculation but here that two has been taken it out so just take the two out along with the minus then only that x square will be plus ensure that whenever you take i mean uh, you make that x square as a term that should be a positive so that we have taken that negative outside so now this are uh, going to be x square minus 6x okay so maybe immediately i can write it if this number is 6x then what number i should add and subtract i should add 3 square also i should subtract 3 square because uh, when i'm adding 3 square and subtracting 3 square the value will be balanced so no other changes will happen and uh, these three terms i can write it as a complete square like 7 minus 2 into x minus 3 the whole square because this is in the form of a square minus 2 ab plus b square so that i can write as x minus 3 whole square minus 9 and 2 is common for both so this is what i can write now then again i have to expand it then only will get the proper format because the here one constant here one constant that i have to combine it 7 minus 2 into x minus 3 the whole square plus 18 because minus 2 into minus 9 is plus 18 then 18 plus 7 can be combined it is 25 minus 2 into x minus 3 whole square and actually that is the actual form that we have to bring it into we brought it okay so maybe uh what does it mean by this y is equal to if you are taking this function as y y is equals 25 minus 2 into x plus 3 whole square so actually this is the proper form of uh, parabola right yes we'll go to the next one state the coordinates of the stationary point on the curve y equal to f of x yes actually we have to take y equal to f of x as the curve we can do this in two different ways like how uh, this actually you can compare it with y minus k equals a into x minus h whole square so this is the format that you can compare with um, so if you are comparing x comma k i mean yeah h comma k is going to be the vertex either it will be this vertex or if it's open downward this is going to be the vertex but that is actually a vertex here it is acting as a stationary point because you can see it clearly the curve is decreasing and after this value i mean after this value it started to increasing so it's changing the uh, curve's position so that's what actually stationary point is called normally what is the method that we will use for uh, stationary that actually it is not required to use it here because it's just for one more question and also this is one of the trick so you no need to do the double the work if you compare this then we can rewrite this equation as y minus 25 is equals minus 2 into x plus 3 whole square so in this we can get to know what is the vertex vertex of this parabola the vertex is uh, Minus three because it has to be x minus h, so it is minus three comma uh, plus twenty five. When we have written here, it's minus twenty five, so minus k minus twenty five, so k values plus twenty five. That's it. So this is the stationary point actually minus three comma plus twenty five. That's it. 
suppose you forget that this is the standard form and you are having a confusion about whether it is plus or minus no need to worry you just differentiate the given curve what is the given curve is y equals uh, so maybe we can write in the form what they have given or even we can write the previous one 7 minus 2x square minus 12x so if you find y dash you will get 7 will be 0 it will be minus 4x minus 12 and if you equate this with 0 you will get minus 4x minus 12 will come here plus 12 so x will be 12 divided by negative 4 it is negative 3 after getting the x value if you put this x value here we are getting the y value same that minus 25 so negative 3 comma 25 is the stationary point this is the actual method but whenever you are writing it in the form of this y minus k equals x a index minus h whole square then you can use this very well because since it's a parabola this is possible we'll go to the next question the function g is defined by uh, the same function is given for x greater than or equal to k state the smallest value of k actually i will tell you uh, i will tell you the direct answer first and then i will explain you that how it works in the next subdivision because that they have asked it in the next one whenever you have a function and that you have written in the complete square method i mean complete square form like this is what we converted and we written as 2 into x plus 3 whole square so whenever you have written this uh, the function's domain is going to start by substituting this value as 0 right uh, so why it has to be 0 because we know that the function will not be this square value cannot be negative it's going to be the minimum value of uh, 0 onwards it's going to start so x plus 3 will be maybe you can ask how why it can't be even can be negative that time that whole square will make it as a positive i will explain you that so what is the ideology a trick that you have to use is x plus 3 you just have to equate it with 0 so if you are getting x equals to negative 3 so that is the value of k that k is negative 3 right i will give you the proper explanation why it has come in the next subdivision because that's what we have asked it and even in the previous video i have mentioned that if they have given this and when this has an inverse what is the smallest value in the complete square you just equate that with zero and get the value of x that's what the starting value okay find for this value of k find g inverse of x g inverse of x we need to we need to find for this so we'll take the same format uh, so actually g of x is 25 minus 2 into x plus 3 whole square right so we'll take this as y so if you are taking this as y then we will move one by one that side since this is negative we'll move that into right side so it will be positive 2 into x plus 3 whole square so that time 25 plus y will come here it is going to be minus y then we'll move 2 to that side so it will be 25 minus y divided by 2 then if you move square to the side this will be square root plus or minus square root then plus 3 will come here it will become minus 3 so in a single step we have moved everything one by one if you are okay with you can do it then we have to swap x and y so y is equals minus 3 plus or minus or directly you can write f inverse of x since here it is g it is g inverse of x you can write as minus 3 plus or minus root of 25 minus y divided by 2 so this is what actually oh sorry it should be 25 minus x divided by 2 okay so uh, now you will get the answer for the previous subdivision why i have started with negative 3 because we know that the square root is always a positive value it's never going to be a negative value uh, so this value minimum starts with 0 or is negative 0 so if it's going to be 0 then what will happen uh, it will never be uh, negative so that if it's going to be 0 then what will be having at minus 3 plus 0 so the function will be minus 3 is what the starting value even if you take negative minus 3 minus 0 that's going to be negative 3 so the function's minimum value starts with negative 3 that's what actually we have got it i'm explaining one more time 
negative 3 and this minimum value of this is going to be 0 so negative 3 plus or minus 0 both uh, operations are going to give the value as negative 3 that's why actually we have written negative 3 as the value for k because square root this will not be a negative 1 uh, it will be minimum of 0 maximum of positive so it's going to be the 0 is the minimum if this is the minimum and minus 3 plus 0 or minus 3 minus 0 is what going to be the start value of the function so only the k value should be 3 okay let's come to this whether we finish g inverse of x actually not because we need to give the domain for this also what value can be substituted here for the x actually x cannot be uh, equal to 25 or it cannot be greater than 25 why it is because uh, this is going to be more than 25 then what will happen the value of x will be like uh, it will give a negative because 25 minus if I give 7 27 then 25 minus 7 27 is going to be negative 2 but square root of negative is not possible we know that very well so it should not be negative so we are defining that the domain should be lesser than or equal to 25 right only in this case this is possible else if it's going to be greater than then it will have a negative so what the domain of the function is x less than or equal to 25 we will continue solving the next question that uh, equation of a curve is y equals x square minus 6x plus k where k is a constant find the set of values of a k for which the whole of the curve lies above the x-axis so actually here i should use the discriminant values less than zero which means uh, discriminant is less than zero we know that there are no real roots why no real roots i am using because if you read the condition clearly then you will get to know the curve lies above the x-axis suppose if this is the axis then if the curve is since uh, by the format we can get to know it's a parabola if it lies the above x-axis we know that we can see that it is not intersecting x-axis which means it is not having any solution we are clear that if any curve intersects the x-axis then only it will have a solution since this curve is not intersecting it will not have any solution which means del value is going to be less than zero so if the del value is less than zero then just if you substitute you will get to know what is the set of values for k so substituted it's b square so negative 6 square minus 4 into 1 into k is less than 0 so minus 6 square is 36 minus 4k is less than 0 so negative 4k we can move into that side so 4k is uh, 36 less than 4k and k is greater than 36 by 4 it is 9 so k should be 36 uh, sorry k should be greater than 9 then only it is possible that is a set of values for k it's very simple actually even you can do it in another method that you can write this as complete square and you can get to know what is the k value it can have because square value will not be if you write this as a complete square you will get x minus 3 whole square plus k minus 9 then you know that this will not be a negative one and uh, this one if it is intersecting x-axis this has to I mean not intersecting x-axis this is the possibility that k minus 9 is not equal to or greater than 0 so in that way also you can try if you are okay but this is the easiest one next one is find the set of values of k for which the line is tangent to the curve so even this one you can do it in two different ways the usual way is uh, this is the line which is tangent to the curve the curve equation and then line equation both are going to intersect each other I mean the del value you can use as 0 like x square minus for the value of k uh, find the value of k so that we can write x square minus 6x plus k is equal to a 7 minus 2x you can do it why are we doing this because this is the tangent and actually we are finding the intersection point like this is the curve and this is the intersection point we are finding maybe we cannot say that it is a tangent now so we should not say that as intersecting point but still it is intersecting at one point 
maybe we can take like that and del is equal to 0 is the one that we can use it which means here when you are writing a proper quadratic equation you will get x square minus 6x minus 2x comes here minus plus 2 so it is going to be minus 4x and plus k minus 7 it will get it and as we discussed before since it's a tangent del value will be equal to 0 so that if you apply it minus 4 square minus 4 into 1 into k minus 7 equals 0 so minus 4 square is 16 and this whole value we can move into that side so equals 4 into 1 into k minus 7 so 4k minus 28 will get it how this whole value become positive because this is negative if this negative is going that side it will become positive then 4k is negative 28 will come here positive 28 so it is going to be 44 and k values 44 by 4 it is 11 so k is 11 value you can even do this in the different another method that is since this is the tangent which means both of them will have the same gradient like uh, the gradient of the tangent and then gradient of the curve this is the curve actually if you differentiate this you will get y dash as 2x minus 6 you see x square minus 6x plus k is the curve if you differentiate this you will get this then after that this is actually the gradient value we can even say this is m for a particular value that is 2x minus 6 from the for the curve and in this you can get to know what is the gradient is it is if it goes that's it will be negative 2 now you can equate both the 2x minus 6 is equal to negative 2 then you will get x as uh, 4 by 2 2 you will get 2 then if x is 2 then you will substitute the uh, y value maybe you can even substitute in this itself so that we are getting y value as 3 so in this if you substitute you will get to know x is 2 y is 3 is the point on the curve as well as in the point on the uh, gradient I mean uh, tangent how because the meeting point of any curve is same as I mean that is same for both curve and then a tangent so if this is the point that we find that is the point of contact then that should be on the curve also since in the curve we have y equals x square minus 6x plus k so we can apply that here 3 equals 2 square is 4 minus 6 to 12 plus k so it is going to be minus 8 uh, minus 8 will come here plus 8 it's 11 k values 11 even in this method you are getting the same so actually here what I did I, I said they are intersecting and the intersecting point is giving a equal root that way I have tried and k value I have got as 11 but now in this method I found the uh, gradient for the curve by using differentiation and that from the tangent I got the gradient that both I have equated I got the point of contact actually here I am not getting the point of contact directly I am getting what is a k value after getting the point of contact I am substituting in the curve so that I am getting the value of k right actually for this video I am taking so much time but it's okay I am thinking that I am explaining a lot if you understood I will be happy I am the happiest person ever okay so now uh, the coefficient of x square in the expansion of this and this is equal to 330 so in both the cases we just have to find out what is the coefficient of x square because uh, here we have to find coefficient of x square here we have to find out the coefficient of x square and that too we have to equate with 330 so that we'll get to know what is the value of a right okay now usually if they have given that binomial expansion then how will you do it you no need to expand i mean you don't need to write all the terms and find where is x square and even here no need to write all the terms and find where is x square add both and equate it with 330 no need to do anything else just see uh, we know how that binomial expansion works it is n c r a power n minus r and b power r is what we will be using it right so this r says that what will be the power so by uh, based on this and this power only we are going to write a single step answer we want coefficient of x square right so where do we have x square only here so this term should have the power actually this is b and this is a 
right so what do we want we want x square which means we should have the power as 2 right so first term is a second term is b and b power r if you know then you can write what is a power n minus r n r all the values you will get to know and what is b here it is x by 2 and what do you want x square is what you want which means this b power r r value you found it that is 2 so which means you can rewrite it b power 2 is what you have to find and here it's going to be a power n minus r n is this value so 6 minus 2 is 4 or you can even subtract and check it 4 plus 2 is 6 so in that way you can get it and 6 c 2 is what you have to find it and this a and b you just have to replace it just for your understanding and for the first time i have written like this so 6 c 2 a value is 2 so 2 power 4 and b values x by 2 so x by 2 power 2 is what for the first term in the same time we can find for the second term also so i will just write so that you will get clear on this even here we want uh, actually this is a this is b and b should have the power as 2 which means a should have the power of 3 how because total value is 5 so how here is 2 and here is 4 like the same because of four, 6 if totally we have 5 then this should be 2 and a should have the power of 5 so x power 2 and a power 3 then only it matches the power then it is actually 5 5 c 2 is what we need to find it and 6 c 2 2 power 4 and x by 2 whole square actually x by 2 whole square we can expand and write as x square divided by 4 6 c 2 and everything if you simplify it together then we are getting the answer as 60 x square and here we are getting the answer as 10 a cube so 10 a cube x square they said the coefficient of x square is 330 so what is the coefficient of x square so x square if you take as common 60 plus 10 a cube so actually this is what the coefficient of x square so this value is equal to 330 because we are comparing only the coefficient so 10 a cube is equal to 330 minus 60 that is nothing but 270 and that is 10 a cube so 10 and 27 can be simplified so a cube is 27 a cube is 27 then a is 3 we got the value of a it's so simple and i'm explaining once again whenever you want to find out for a particular value just decide which is a which is b and b power what it should be or a power what it should be if you decide that you just apply only in this specific format and get to know the value so your work will be easiest right we'll go to the next one a geometric progression has a second term of 12 so usually geometric progression will be like a a r a r square like that it will be they said it is 12 is a second term so a r equal to 12 sum to infinity is 54 so sum to infinity is nothing but a divided by 1 minus r is what sum to infinity that they said it as 54 um, so one of the value we can find it find the possible values of the first term of the progression so either we have to replace a or r so i will think where a, which one i am going to replace it if it's a normal question any one i can do it and i mean i can replace and do but here since i want to find out it a uh, i mean first term is nothing but a i have to find the value for a so a equals 12 divided by r is what the substitution that i have to use if i actually sorry if i i should not use because if i use this the whole equation will term will turn into in terms of r so i should make in terms of a for that i should get the value of r so r is equal to 12 divided by a is what i have to use it so if i use my work will be easier i know need to do the double work so now a divided by 1 minus r is going to be replaced by 12 by a equals 54 and this can be simplified as a divided by a minus 12 whole divided by a equal to 54 then this a and this a uh, this a will go to the numerator so that time it will be a square by a minus 12 is equals to 54 
then a minus 12 can go that side so a square equals 54 into a minus 12 and if I expand and if I brought it into a quadratic equation I'm just getting a square minus 54 a plus 648 is equal to 0 and if I factorize this I'm getting the answer as a minus 36 I mean I can directly write the answer right because you're all not babies so a equal to plus 36 and plus 18 are the two values I'm getting for the uh, this geometric progression these two possible values that arithmetic progression has as the first term right it's easy one let's go to the next one that nth term of a progression is p plus q n so nth term is given as p plus q n where p and q are constant and s n is the sum of first n terms find an expression in terms of p q n for s n so sn is the nth term so what we will do for sn um, so here from this we can substitute what is uh, a value that we can get to know and we can find what is d if you find the both then you will get to know what is that i mean uh, nth term also it's very easy so see here p plus qn for finding the a n should be 1 so if n is 1 it is going to be p plus q because n is 1 q into 1 is q so a value is going to be p plus q if you want you can find what is l or else you can directly proceed because you can use the formula sn equals n by 2 into a plus l what is l so this is what l actually nth term is what l this is l now sn is equals n by 2 into a values p plus q plus what is l l is the same so it is nothing but p plus q n so now what you can do you can simplify that into n p plus p it is 2p plus q is only one term is there so if you take q as common you will get n plus 1 that's it actually divided by 2 so we have written that sn in terms of p q and n we have used the formula a and l a a for the a we should we have substituted n as 1 and we got the a and l is nothing but the same uh, p plus q n that's what we have substituted next given that s4 equal to 40 so the one what we have written is what sn we can rewrite once again so sn is n into 2p plus q into n plus 1 whole divide by 2 so what sn we got as they said s40 s4 is 40 so n value is 4 so 40 is equal to 4 into 2p plus n plus 1 is 4 so 4 plus 1 is 5 5q divided by 2 and if you simplify 1 4 at 4 10 4 at 40 10 into 2 20 we are getting the equation as 2p plus 5q is equal to 20 because don't forget this 2 is also there let's substitute the next one it is 72 equals uh, 6 is going to remain as 6 and uh, 2p will remain as 2p plus actually this will be 7q whole divided by uh, 2 then 1 6 at 6 12 6 at 70 so 12 into 2 24 so we'll be getting 2p plus 7q is equals 24 so now if you subtract they both then uh, you'll be getting the value see from this one to this one we'll subtract 2p minus 2p 0 7q minus 5q 2q 4 24 minus 20 is 4 so q is 2 we are getting and after getting q as 2 then we can substitute it in this equation that 2p plus 5 into 2 is 10 equal to 20 so p value will be getting as 5 so actually that's it we found it yeah even the questions are over and this is a bit lengthy video still i have i think i have explained it from the base of uh, binomial expansion differentiation and two three methods for finding the stationary points and the completing square Thank you for watching and share this with your friends if you like. Thank you so much students. If you want a personal tuition for SAT coaching, CBSE, any grades, Cambridge 
are on state board or even for IB then you can contact this number through WhatsApp and you can uh, book for the personal tuitions and if you have uh, any other query then you can contact this number thank you so much